Welcome to part 6 of the audio visualization tutorial in Unity by PeerPlay. In the previous part we implemented the buffer to our spectrum values. Now that we have a smooth movement we want to easily use them in our game. For that we will create values that range from 0 to 1. Where 1 would be the highest amplitude of the current audio playing. This way we can apply our numbers easily to anything in our game. Transforms, lights, shader values, blend shapes, physics, animations, etc. So once again we will start to work in our audio pair class. Now to get a value between 0 and 1, we need to divide our current value by the highest value that has been played. So we need to create a new float to get the highest values. So let's create a new float. And the value that we create between 0 and 1 we have to store that too. So let's create those values. We'll make them a public static float. And we also want to create a audio band for the buffer. Now we are going to use these values and we don't really need to use these anymore. So let's make them all private. And now let's create a new void. And we'll call this void create audio bands and of course once again put it into the update now once again also we are going to start by making a for loop inside now first we need to store our highest value so let's do that with an if statement if our current frequency band is higher than the highest of the frequency band then the frequency band highest is equal to frequency band And now to get our audio band and our audio band buffer, uh, we have to divide this by this. So outside of the if statement, let's type in our audio band is a frequency band divided by the frequency band highest. And let's do the same thing for the buffer. I will copy this and paste it and this will become buffer. And here we're not going to use the frequency band, but we're going to use the band buffer. And that should be all for our class. And let's see in Unity how we can apply these values to our game. So I've already set up a custom scene with some scripts to use with the audio values. So let's look at them and see how they work. So we've got here the parametric cubes, which are already known to you. Um, but we've changed a little bit to the script. Here I'm talking to the material and get the component of the material. And I'm talking to the emission color of the material of the shader actually on the material and I want to set its color to a value between 0 and 1 and that's really handy because we've already got the audio period audio band buffer and its value will always be between 0 and 1 so I can apply this to a new color and I will set it to its R, G and B and every frame this emission color will be somewhere between 0 and 1 now so what this script will do is it will change the emission color here between this value of 0 and up to 1. Now we've also got some lights here and these lights also have a script light on audio and as you can see here the maximum intensity of a light would be 8 somewhere between 0 and 8. So in our script I'm going to get the audio band buffer value again 
which is between 0 and 1 and I will multiply this by the maximum intensity that I will specify here. So if I would specify here a maximum intensity of 8 then this value of intensity of the light will be somewhere between 0 and 8 or between the minimum intensity in this case and I can specify a band to work on if it's going to be 0 then it's going to be the deep base so let's look over here um, here I've specified 1 so it would be between the base and the kick and the other light would work on the little higher frequencies now let's not wait any longer and check out this example right here as you can see the game runs very smoothly onto the incoming audio and it's very easy to apply it to various different things if you have followed all the previous parts you have successfully made yourself an audio visualization system yay in the next part I will show you a few more cool examples of how to implement this into gameplay and visuals. But for now I want to thank you for following this tutorial, it has been some hard work to make this for you. If this tutorial helped you in any way please leave a comment, I'd love to hear from you. If you want to support me in making more tutorials consider a small donation to my PayPal, see the link in the description. And as always, happy coding!